In this video, you will learn how to calculate the probe offset and the probe bat position values for your Marlin firmware configuration. Come and join me. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I'd like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. So when trying to compile the Marlin firmware for the first time, when you install a new probe, be it the Beal Touch or any other kind of probe, you probably run into this issue, probe bad position is outside of the probe region. So this error simply means you have to calculate those values which tell the Marlin firmware where the probable bad area is, so where we can put the nozzle and therefore also the probe. And we're going to start with the first step to do this correctly is to find out the probe offset values. So just imagine this is your printable area and we'll take the ANIT A8 as a sample and we have to understand first like what is the front of the printer and if you look at the ANIT A8 this is the front of the printer when you look on the display then you're looking basically on the printer from the front and the same for the M3 the, the front of the printer is basically where the display and the control panel is located. But this will come in handy later to understand like where are the borders and where are the printable area. If you position the nozzle at a position of 0, 0, that means you're positioning in, in the left front corner. And the right upper corner is then the maximum size of your print bed. In this case, it's 220 by 220 millimeters. So let's say the nozzle is in the middle of the print bed and we want to calculate the offset value and you have built a probe holder that's to the left and to the front of the nozzle. Then you have to subtract the position of the probe versus the nozzle, and it means it is a negative value. For example, let's say it's minus 20. And if it's to the front of the nozzle, this is also a negative value, and this could be, for example, minus 30. I mean, these values are completely dependent on the printer that you have, and where you put your uh, probe versus the nozzle. And it could also be a positive value if the probe is behind the nozzle and for example also to the right of the nozzle. So you need to calculate or take a ruler basically and measure out these distances and then write them down. And these are the first two values that you need to set to the configuration file, which are called probe offset from extruder values for the X offset and for the Y offset. Okay, so now we've defined our probe offset value and the next step is like we need to define the probe bad positions. And how do we do that? Well, so let's first think about what is the maximum probable area. So let's come back to our print area, which was like calculated this way. We have 220 by 220, a maximum printable area. And we wanna define a safe area uh, where we can put our nozzle and we want to add some distance to the corners of the print bed which is like the min probe edge value in the Marlin configuration and this value could be for example 10 or 20 millimeters and that would mean we would just draw a little edge here and this corner would be defining okay this is this is the safe area we don't want to leave that safe area with anything be it the probe or the nozzle to do the bad leveling and the probing. And why would we want to define this, this kind of um, safety border is just, there might be like screws in the corners. In, in my case for the ANIT A8, there are four screws in the corners. Probably you will have some clips here holding um, your, be it the, the glass bed or be it like the plastic sheet. So you, wanna, you don't wanna touch those and uh, you need to define, okay, this is, the, this is the safe area that I don't wanna leave. So we have the min probe edge defined and it could be like in our sample 20 millimeter. So the value would be 20. And now we would have to think about, is our probe to the left and to the front of the nozzle or it's to the back and to the right or any kind of other combination and then calculate these four values, which are the left probe bed position, right probe bed position, front and back probe 
bad position values. Let's look at sample number one, how to calculate these values. The probe is to the left and to the front of the extruder. So this sample is actually taken from a question from the Discord channel. Um, by the way, the link to the Discord channel is in the description down below. So if you wanna join, feel free to join. And I'm there and other people helping each other with 3D printing questions. And this sample uh, means that um, if we draw it, this might be the nozzle and then we have an offset value for an X value of minus 25. So the probe is to the left of the nozzle and then we have a Y value uh, of minus 44, which means the probe is at around about here, which is then minus 44 in terms of the Y offset. So we have now put like the probe to the lowest left corner, which would mean, okay, the probe is like at an offset of 20 from the left and the 20 from the front, which would give us two values, um, which would be the left probe bed position uh, with a value of 20 and the front probe bed position with a value of 20. Now let's look at the other two values, the right and the back probe bed position. Let's imagine we have to put the nozzle somewhere here and we don't want to uh, we don't want the nozzle to leave the safe area and then we have our probe somewhere here and that would mean that this value is calculated by using the 220 minus the offset for example for the right position which is minus 25 so and this would give us a value of 185. And so the back probe bed, bed position is calculated by taking the 220, um, subtracting the min probe edge, and then subtracting the 44 for the Y offset, and then this give us uh, 156. So this is then, if you draw a little order here, uh, this would give us this kind of probable area. So um, for the sake of completeness, let's have a look at the second sample, which is the complete opposite, where the probe is behind and to the right of the extruder. So we would have a same, same situation with the print bed. We would have these values, 220 by 220. And we said, okay, this is our nozzle. And we said, okay, the, um, the probe is behind and to the right. So it would mean the probe is somewhere here. And if we also calculate this little bracket here, we would say, okay, what is the maximum distance that we can reach? First of all, we do the min probe edge again. And this sample, the min probe edge would be 10. Um, and then we would have an offset of 20 to the right and an offset of 30 to the back. So it means these values would be 20 and 30. So positive values. So where would we be able to put the probe now? So let's put the probe to the upper right corner first, and um, which is the obvious and easiest value to calculate. And look where the nozzle is. This would mean that the probe would be at a value of 220 minus the min probe edge, which would be 210. So these two values are easily calculated. The right probe bad position and the back probe bad positions would be uh, 210 each. Now let's look at the our little bit more difficult values, but also very obvious. Uh, we want to put our nozzle to the lower left corner and our probe would be here. And that would mean the probe can reach um, a distance of 10 plus the distance of the probe to the right for the X value. So it would be 20, which would mean a total sum of 30 in the X direction. And for the Y direction, it's the same. We would have this kind of distance here. We would have 10 for the min probe edge. And then we would add the 30 of the offset value to the back, which would give us a front probe bad position value of 40. So that is basically it. And if you have another combination of values, you can imagine how to calculate those. Now, if you're still unsure, I've put some links in the description where you can find a little more in-depth explanation, um, which is also illustrated. So you can read about it uh, in various places. I think I would just um, make this video because uh, the question comes up quite often and I wanted to explain how to do this. So I hope you're successful with this kind of illustration. Some comment reading from the last video. Top comment is from Steve Ryax. Nice explanations. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, uh, Steve, for subscribing for such a long time. I think you were one of the first subscribers. Yeah, happy to have you on the channel. A very good community that we're building. 
uh, also Kurt Wolfe, um, man, thanks for subscribing. Um, you're also very active in the channel, in the Discord channel, which I would really thank you for. And um, you're also saying a very informative video as always. I'm trying to keep up the good content, of course. The next comment is from Mark. That is a lot of detail, good job. Yeah, um, I, I tried to cover like every detail in the video and I still missed one. Uh, which I'm I, I'm thinking about redoing the video. No, not, not I'm kidding. I'm re-releasing the video probably in, in a few weeks because I forgot one detail, which was if you do uh, the Marlin firmware cloning from GitHub, uh, you always have to copy your default configuration files to the Marlin folder. Of course, uh, I forgot to mention that. Next comment is from Warlock. Is there a way flash Marlin firmware to MKS base 1.4? Um, and how would you do that? Uh, would be able to explain. So the question would be probably if I'm doing this on the channel, I'm, I'm planning to do a RAM sport, how to install that and probably the MKS. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Definitely something I'm going to look for. Um, next comment from Dutch, does it work for Windows 8 as well? You only mentioned Windows 10. Yes, it works with Windows 8 and it also works with Windows 7. The, the only thing that changed uh, during these Windows versions from 7 to 8 and then to 10 um, that Windows enforces um, signed drivers and you cannot install any kind of driver that you download from the internet. So it has to be signed and it's really hard to turn that check off. And that's why I had to use this tool that replaces the driver and really enforces the installation of the driver. Next comment is from Thumb Warrior DX. Um, this is a great way to get in touch with the shortcomings of the 80 mega 1284P and then long for the days of through hole chips and sockets, graphic display plus SD card plus filament change is already too much for 120K. That's absolutely right. Uh, you will run into memory issues with this kind of board because it has such a small amount of flash memory and you would have to think about turning off certain features if you wanna enable other features. So the next comment is from Alan Metis. I'm glad to hear that the ANET 17 board are still flashable via USB. I just bought my first 3D printer and ain't E16 and that is what it has in it. I'm going to go and try this out this weekend. Yeah, just try it out. Skylab says, um, thanks again for another great video, Daniel. I already fresh my ANIT using a method from one of your previous videos. Next is my Ender 3. Um, yeah, that's great. I mean, that's why we're here on this channel um, explaining stuff that usually should work, but sometimes doesn't work. And the pitfall and the devil is always in the detail, as you know. Rick Dix Haberdashery says, um, ain't it a we have a 1.1 thin green mine work for two days and cough died. Well, that's that's sad to hear. Um, I guess sometimes that happens. I actually also destroyed one of my main boards. Um, I, I don't actually remember what the problem was. I think one of the uh, resistors just burned through and I got a new one and that first one was probably a 1.1 and then I got the 1.5 and now I've got the 1.7. Jungle Jargon says, I remember finger all that out myself without knowing anything about it prior to putting my printer kit together a number of years ago. I won't say how many hours, days, weeks or months um, it took me. So the, the thing is, um, I had the same kind of experience. I had, I, there's various places where you find information and it's sort of scattered and it's not always complete and not always up to date. And sometimes it's just wrong because there was recently an article, I don't remember actually where it was published, but it was talking about the USB method and yeah, it's so easy. And there was nothing mentioned about like, what happens if this doesn't work? WS says, hey, my bad leveling sensor doesn't work. It goes to one place to calibrate and that's it. How can I fix this please? The question is, do you get an error on the display? So please come back to this chat, um, um, to this conversation and tell me what you actually see happening on the display. If there's, for example, a probing error and that can be solved because there is other offset values that you need to get right. Um, and this might be the reason for this kind of error, but you have to tell me what you actually have as an error on your display. And then we have Booz asking, um, hello, I have an ANET A8 with a red ANIT 3 board version 1.5 whenever I want to upload more than firmware with Windows 7 and the USB virtual compot driver selected uh, I get an error and there are, is basically the not in sync error that I also mentioned in all of the videos um, and the reason could be like either you have plugged in your cable into a USB hub so please check that out if that's the case put it directly into your computer and just close every all the programs and then try again and if it still doesn't work it could mean 
and it probably will mean that you don't have a bootloader or something else is broken on your flash memory and you should just try out one of the methods that I mentioned using a Arduino or USB ASP or another programmer to fix this problem and then you will get, be able to flash the firmware again. And Kevin Moore seems to have the same kind of issue. So, and I mean, the point of the video was, if you are not sure what the problem actually is, um, you can get a programmer for 10 bucks on Amazon and just try it out because, I mean, you cannot destroy anything. If your bootloader is broken or it doesn't have a bootloader, um, you can just flash it on and it should work. So um, it doesn't make sense to put too much time into like what is the reason and um, there's actually no tool or software um, that I know that can tell you whether there is a bootloader or not or what the actual software problem with your printer is. And then we finally have Fabio um, with the question, uh, well, hello, apparently I could install the firmware but it's not possible to do the auto home or control the motors, what, would you help me? Is it necessary to install some Arduino library? I guess that was the point that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I forgot um, to tell you, okay, of course, every time you download a new version of the Marlin firmware, you have to copy over the default configuration files from your printer subdirectory into the Marlin directory. So that's all part of the GitHub repository. And if you don't do that, you're basically using a, a default default configuration that is not specific to your printer and that might uh, lead to this kind of error. So I hope this video helped you to find out how to calculate the right values and uh, for your probe offsets and probe bad positions. And yeah, if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe and all the good things. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye bye.